Thanks for watching. If you find my videos helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And please look in the description beneath this video for useful links to other videos and resources to help you learn chemistry. For today's video, I'm going to teach you how to answer the question shown here. I invite you to pause the video right now and try this question on your own first, then hit play and I'll show you how to do it. To do this kind of question quickly, we're going to begin by writing down the electron configuration for all of the simple elements shown in the multiple choice lineup using principles that I've taught in other videos whose links are found in the description below. I've written all of these electron configurations for these elements here on the board. What we'll do next is write down an orbital energy diagram, which is one of these diagrams that has a bunch of boxes with arrows going up and down inside them representing electrons. The question you might have is, how do I know how many boxes I should write? The answer all comes down to each orbital type. And for that, I like to remember columns divided by two equals your number of boxes. Specifically, if we look at this table, I ask you, how many columns does the S block have? Yeah, it has two columns. So I take the number of columns, two, and I divide it by two to get one. Thus, if you're writing down an orbital energy diagram, you would write only one box for any S orbitals, regardless of whether it was a 1S orbital or a 2S orbital or a 12S orbital or a 75S orbital. It's just one box for each one of those. The higher the principal quantum number, in this case one versus two, the further up vertically or higher in energy we place the box. So what do we do with a P shell like a 2P shell? Well, I ask you looking at this figure, how many columns are there in the P block? Yeah, you can see there are six. So I take the number of columns six and divide it by two and get three. Hence, I would write down three boxes for my P shell. Now, if you do the same process for any D orbitals, you would get five boxes. And for F orbitals, you would get seven. In this case, then, I'm going to write down one box, as I explained, for this 1s orbital. And then I'll write down a separate single box for this 2s orbital that will be higher up energetically or vertically because 2 is a larger principal quantum number than 1. Now, please understand I'm not writing these proportionally accurately in their relative locations. I'm just trying to fit them all on the board. Now, for the 2p orbitals over here, as we just saw, that's going to be three boxes which I'll lay down at roughly the same vertical location as the 2s because they have the same principal quantum number, n equals 2. Now, for fluorine, how many electrons do I have in each of these orbitals? Well, that's these superscripts right here. For example, in the 1s orbital, I have two electrons. So I lay them down, one spin up, and the other spin down inside that 1s box. For the 2s orbital, I also have two electrons. So I do the same thing in this box, which takes me now to the 2p orbitals. These three different boxes that each represent three separate p orbitals at an n equals 2 energy level have a combined total of five electrons. According to Hund's rule, I put those electrons in and I do not pair them up until I have to. So I go spin up one, two, and three. Now I have two more electrons, four and five, that I have to lay back in here and pair up. I'm gonna do those spin down, four and five. So this is a good diagram for fluorine. How many unpaired electrons does fluorine have? Yeah, as you can see, it's just one represented by that arrow right there. Now, if we go through the analogous process for carbon, its diagram should look like this. And you can see that it has two unpaired electrons represented by those arrows right there. And what of oxygen with its four electrons in its 2p shell? Similar to fluorine, I lay them all down. One, two, three, and then four. Oxygen therefore has two unpaired electrons represented by those arrows there. This leaves me then with nitrogen with its three electrons filling its 2p shell. If you go through the analogous process, you can see its diagram should look like that, which is of course three unpaired electrons for nitrogen and therefore makes this question's correct answer option C.